Hi, this is Jade Xu from the University of Memphis. In this video, I'm going to show you how to run repeated measure and COVA with a example. So a total of 24 um, participants were put onto three different diet regimen. And their rate of weight gain were measured twice. Once is during the three months when they are on the diet, and the other time, the second time, was um, the rate of gain, weight gain. After three months, they are off the uh, diet. And their initial weight was use, used as a covariate. So the research questions we're trying to answer is, after controlling for their initial weight, is there a significant difference in the rate of weight gain while they are on the diet versus while they are off the diet? And the second research question is, are there significant differences in the rate of weight gain across the three different diets? So when we run the repeated measure ANOVA, first we want to make sure that we meet assumption of um, homogeneity regression. In other words, there's no interaction effect between the independent and the dependent variables. We know the independent variable is the three different diets. And the dependent variable is measured twice, the rate of weight gain measured time one and time two. So to verify this assumption, let's come here, analyze, general linear model. We're, no, we're nowhere going to do the repeated measure ANOVA. I'm going to call my repeat measure gain because I have uh, two measures of rate of weight gain. So number of levels is two. Uh, I can define my variable here. Uh, the first measure of weight gain is here, second measure bringing to here, and uh, the between subject factor is the diet. And initial weight is the covariate. To test the assumption of homogeneity regression, I first want to customize my model, and I want to do this for the between subject factor. So it's diet and weight, and I want to make sure that there's no interaction between the two terms. So I bring the interaction to the right and just click OK at this point. Again, the only thing we're interested in at this point is that the interaction between diet and weight do not make significant difference in the measure of the dependent variables. So here it shows that we have a significant value of 0 0.734, which is greater than our R whole level, would lead to our um, conclusion that we do not reject the null hypothesis, and we meet assumption of homogeneity of regression. Another assumption we need to verify is that there is a linear relationship between the covariate and the um, dependent variables. And you can just run scatter plot to uh, verify that particular assumption. I'm going to skip that in this video, and we're going to run the repeated measure and COVA. We have been here. We just need to make some modifications. I already uh, defined my within subject factor as gains. And I already have the variables in the places they belong to. I need to first change my model back to full factorial. And then remember, you want to have your descriptive statistics, uh, test of homogeneity variance and estimate of effect size. And in this case, you may want to see the adjusted means for the three diet groups, and also look at the means for the um, two measures of the rate of weight gain. So we continue, and OK. 
here is our output. Um, we can see here that we have two measures, two repeated measures of the dependent variable, the rate of weight gain. And for the between subject factor, there are uh, there is there are three levels, and there are eight subject within each of the diet group. And here is the mean and standard deviation of the raw measure. Uh, this place we have a test of equality of covariance matrices, and we met that. Um, assumption, we did not violate that assumption with a p of 0.585. Um, since we only have two repeated measure of the dependent variable, so there's no test of sphericity. Here are the two tables for the within subject effect and contrast. Uh, since we can assume sphericity, we need to read the first line of each test. Uh, actually, those tests were summarized down here. So you can take a look here. Um, these are the sum scores for each of the effects. And the degree of freedom is given. You know that the division between the sum square and degree of freedom gave you the mean squares. And here is the error component. That's the unexplained variance in this data set. And if you remember from ANOVA, the mean square of a effect divided by the mean square of the error, you get the F observed. That's how we get the observed values. Um, according to the uh, F test, there is a significant difference in the rate of weight gain measure at time 1 and time 2 because uh, the P is 0 0.001, which is significantly lower than 0.05. In addition, the difference in the rate of weight gain between the two times has a significant interaction effect with the initial weight. So that's the covariate and the time factor. They too have a significant interaction effect. In other words, the rate of weight gain for people of different initial weight are different when they are on the diet versus when they are off the diet. Finally, we can see that the last within subject contract is um, between gain, the rate of weight gain measured two times and the uh, independent variable. And they two do not have significant interaction effect. Uh, because P is 0.578 greater than 0.05. This means that the difference in the rate of weight gain from time 1 to time 2 are pretty much consistent for people on the three different diet. Now let's move on to the between subject effects. First, we know that we request a test equal variance. And here, the test shows that for the um, dependent measure at time 1 and time 2, we uh, met the assumption of homogeneity of variance. Um, this is the between subject effect table. Pay attention here that we have a line that says transformed variable, average. This means the dependent variable here is the average value of rate of weight gains measured at, uh, at time 1 and time 2. So although we have two repeated measures of the dependent variable, 
they are combined into an average. We only have one dependent measure in this particular test. And the table shows you that initial weight as a covariate explained a significant amount of variance in the dependent measure. Also, for people on the three different diets, they have significant differences in the average rate of weight gain. In this table, we can see that the dependent measure, the average value of rate of weight gain across two times is almost 18 for microbiotic and 20 for low fiber and 21.3 for high fiber. Are they significant different? You can do this. Go to the original place that we request the test and when you are at the option places, request a compare mean, a compare main effects, and you can see the test of pairwise comparison. Okay. We're going to skip over the part of the output we have looked at and come to this place. You have additional table that's the pairwise comparison. And in this table, you see that there is a significant difference between the rate of weight gain for people who are on microbiotic versus who are on low fiber. Uh, also between those who are on microbiotic versus those who are on high fiber. However, uh, there's no significant difference in the rate of weight gain between participants who are um, on high fiber versus those on low fiber because the P is 0.112 greater than R equals 0.05. Since I also request to have the mean of the um, two dependent measures displayed, I have another table that shows the um, average rate of weight gain for all 24 participants at time 1 is 20 and at time 2 is 19.29. So that's the end of our uh, repeated measure ANCOVA analysis. It's a combination of um, ANCOVA and repeated measure ANOVA. Uh, hope this will help you understand the procedure better. Thank you.